China and Russia are two world powers involved in spaceflight, and they've decided to cooperate for lunar activities. On March 9, 2021, an autonomous lunar permanent research base was created by the collaboration of the China National Space Administration CNSA, and Russian space agency Roscosmos. The two countries were able to do this using the Outer Space Treaty of 1967. The emphasis of the MOU is on scientific discovery and the use of lunar terrain. In this agreement, the International Lunar Research Station ILRS, was described as a comprehensive scientific research base having enough capability for long-term autonomous operations which will be built on the lunar surface or on the orbit of the moon with operations involving lunar exploration and utilization, lunar-based observation, basic scientific experiments, and technical verification. There is so much to understand about this MOU and what it means for the United States and the world at large. So watch this video until the end and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. China and Russia agreed to promote the International Lunar Research Station in a bid to get more international partners to support their joint lunar missions. They did this by broadcasting the South Pole Environment and Resource Survey mission, the Change 7 of China and Russia's Lunar Research 1 Russian Orbital Spacecraft Mission. It comes as no surprise that China and Russia have come together for the utilization and exploration of resources on the moon. The two countries, especially Russia, paid attention when the United States announced the Artemis Accords to create an international mechanism for lunar development, which was led by the US and its partner nations. Last year, the chief of Roscosmos regarded the NASA effort as some sort of NATO in-space political project. He observed the program as a departure of America from the principles of the corporation and mutual support, which was in place when the ISS was built. He said that the Roscosmos was not interested in participating in such a project. The two major partners responsible for building the ISS, which was launched over 20 years ago and served as the ultimate expression of reconciliation efforts after the Cold War between Russia and the United States. The relationship between these countries seems to be eroding as broader US relations are reducing. The first man to be launched into space, Yuri Gagarin, was sent by the Soviet Union about 60 years ago, and this started the intense space race with the United States. 80 years after that, the United States had astronauts on the moon. Moscow has not been able to land cosmonauts on the moon, and its space program has not been strong enough in recent years. It has struggled with corruption and quality control issues, while the US commercial space industry and Chinese space program have continued to advance. China has reason to work with Russia too. The Chinese space agency has been barred by the United States government to cooperate with NASA, and as such, the Chinese space agency has made major strides despite working in isolation. They were unable to join the International Space Station and are now focused on creating their own national space stations. The memorandums of understanding are very symbolic and indicative of political changes, which is what China and Russia have decided to move with. In addition, Sergei Savelyev, the deputy director of international cooperation from Roscosmos, made a statement in response to the Artemis Accords and Donald Trump's executive order in April 2020. He said, attempts to expropriate outer space and aggressive plans to take over other planets are against the principles of international cooperation. He related the order from Trump as colonization of space and clearly pointed to the fact that it was not going to be acceptable for the US to privatize or colonize space. China, on the other hand, did not give an official response to the Artemis Accords. However, the deputy director of CNSA's Space Law Center argued in an article of the Space Review that he did not consider Accords as an extension of the OST, but rather an attempt to create new rules outside what had been established by international regulatory frameworks. It would seem that the International Lunar Station is the Russia-China response to the Artemis project led by NASA. Why is the Moon the place of contention? From the onset of lunar exploration, the moon was originally just a dead rock where humans landed for days, showcased technology, and eventually returned to Earth. Now the moon has become a place with resource potential, including the presence of water, ice, solar power, and rare Earth elements such as platinum, titanium, scandium, and vitrum. For a long time, space scientists from China had discovered the economic potential of space resources and decided to include a $10 billion return on investments from the Earth-Moon zone on a yearly basis by 2050. Almost two decades back in 2002, the lead scientist and founder of the China Lunar Exploration Program, Ouyang Ziyuan, 
cited that China's long-term aim is setting up a base on the moon to tap and make use of its rich resources. His point of view on the matter was supported by the highest level of CNSA leadership. Subsequently, China demonstrated their lunar capability by going on a far side lunar landing in 2019 and engaging in autonomous lunar sample return missions in 2020. The Chinese scientists have also noted that the lunar propellant, which could be made from water ice, would largely reduce the cost of access and movement through the entire volume of space. The launch from the moon is 22 times more efficient than launching from the Earth because of gravity. To properly utilize these resources, there must be a long-term permanent residence on the moon which will first be robotic and then human. The China-Russia MOU highlights the mastery of autonomous robotic bases on the moon. The same China had planned for a permanent presence on the moon by 2036. Russia announced its lunar plan too. In 2018, Russia made an announcement regarding ambitions to extract resources from the moon, followed by a three-phase base construction plan from 2025 to 2040. The first stage involved a lunar orbiter module, 2025, and the second involved constructing a base on the moon, and the third stage involved the construction of an integrated manned moon exploration system. The strategic role of the Earth-Moon Economic Zone is the foundation for the Russia-China MOU. Apart from this, there are two other considerations which largely influence the agreement. These include geopolitical considerations and strategic regime constrictions. The economy is what makes space highly lucrative and sought after, as there are potential returns running in trillions of dollars. The economic growth experience through space will certainly lead to military and other power projection capabilities. The two powerful nations know what how much space can be affected by global leadership in the future and are already taking preparations for it. China looks to be the foremost country in the space exploration by 2045, in time for the centenary of the establishment of the People's Republic in 2049. Xi Jinping, president of China, continuously pointed to the inherent contribution of space to Chinese global leadership. China's space philosophy starts from the demonstration of high-end technology, including human missions, soft landings on the moon, returning samples from the moon to Earth, and missions to Mars. This is to be followed by the construction of a permanent space station, space-based solar power satellites, and deep space probes. For China, the MOU was very timely geopolitically. This is specifically after the country had already successfully showcased high-end indigenous space capability and capacity like far-side landings on the moon, autonomous lunar sample return, and a Mars mission in early 2021. Thus, China does not need to worry about the notion that Chinese space technology was simply Russian technology that was re-engineered. In Russia's case, the MOU means that they can both pool their international resources to register opposition to a US-led space order, which is what both countries are mutually against. For Russia and her president, Vladimir Putin, it is a case of retaking the space leadership position once enjoyed by the Soviet Union. The geopolitical behavior of both countries on Earth is what they are continuing on the moon. Both countries have already established security systems such as the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and the Chinese-led Belt and Road Initiative BRI, which Russia is also an active participant of. Through the MOU, these two countries are questioning the legitimacy of the Artemis Accords and are making a statement that they do not regard the efforts of the United States, both publicly, NASA, and privately with SpaceX as the only way cooperation can be done in space. This basically indicates that leadership in space is contested and China and Russia are giving the US a run for their money. Once both countries are able to gather enough partners and signatories to their lunar research base, they will have what it takes to create an alternative preamble and accord centered on indigenous states which would regulate lunar exploration and development. They will both continue to enjoy international influence through the UN Security Council permanent memberships and veto power and advocacy in the UN space bodies. The MOU for development on the moon also has more strategic implications for both countries. Firstly, Russia has access to an already existing international structure in China's BRI, which almost 140 countries are part of. China and Russia will both have access to launch sites, ground stations, and receiver stations. In addition, they would also have access to a large pool of scientific talent giving more employment opportunities and growing expertise from both countries. The two countries are strongly in opposition to the US policy moves to enable the private sector and commercialization of space in the countries which are part of the Artemis Accords. China and Russia are a bit worried about the prospect of the private space sector taking the lead because they don't yet have a blooming private space sector capable of competing with the US private space sector on a global scale. 
They both fear that as a result of the Artemis Accords, the private space sector has been boosted to move forward rapidly with lunar breakthroughs which would take longer for state-owned space agencies. Innovation and technology will be what determines everything in space. China and Russia are not oblivious to the fact that innovations such as SpaceX's reusable lift, heavy lift rocket is already set to be the world's most advanced reusable rocket and catching up with such advancements may not be easy. Although the private space sector of both countries is not fully developed, China's strategic partnership with Russia opens the door to a long-term mission that can be achieved through a constant and determined approach. While you're still here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen right now for more awesome content waiting for you. See you there.